Kia ora, um, welcome back. So hopefully this will be near the end of the tutorials. Uh, and what we need to do is um, create this, let's have a closer look, uh, door in the middle um, between each box. Uh, and we can see that uh, here in the section that we've got this uh, door. So there's a few elements to this. Um, we're going to start off by locating um, the center between do some more drawing uh, so we're going to find the center between point 0.4 and point 0.5 and that will be our point uh, 10 and then we can uh, uh, that'll be down on the ground floor and then we can figure out the center from there uh, or the height of that. So um, this is going to be a, a little bit tricky so let's just start by finding uh, the center point. So we know we've got 0.4 and 0.5 so here we have 0.4 and if we add those together and then divide it by 2 it'll be the center. So um, let's do an addition there. So 0.4, so we're going to take that geometry and then 0.5. Uh, oh, we've got 0.5. Where's 0.4? That'll be down here, 0.4. So if we add those two together, uh, let's have a look. In, or, so um, here, oh, this top. So uh, and then we need to divide that by two. So let's divide by two. Divide by two. Uh, and then see where the result is. So you can see now that's right in the center of where we need it. Um, so we've got the the. Um, center point happening. Now we need uh, some heights to figure out um, how high we need this point. So let's uh, just pan out, come back to this view and we've got a few things going on. So we've got the height of the door and the height of the sill. So let's um, measure those and then we can add a couple of those things in. So uh, what have we got here? Let's measure the height of the door. So if we do distance there, we can measure from there to there. And that's 2.72, so we can put that in, 2.72 meters, so that's uh, door height, interior, let's call it interior door height, we've got that one, and then uh, we need this sort of door sill so let's measure that distance. Oh, click in here. Turn because we did distance before. Click down there, up to there. Zero point three eight. So zero point three eight. And then double click on there. Door. Oh, door sill and that's basically the bottom part of the door. So we've got a couple of measurements now. So to get the height um, uh, of our point we need to know the center of, of, of a couple of things. So we need the center of the door height and then we need to add the door still on. So let's come into here and then uh, so we need to 
divide by two again. So divide by two. Uh, so we bring that in and then we do an addition. Addition and then add our door sill to half the door height. And then we're going to um, take uh, the two points that we found before. Let's come back out of here. So we've got uh, um, this point, but it's at the ground level, and we need to raise it up. So we've just figured out the height of that, but we need to move that point. So let's move that. Uh, so we take that geometry and we move it in the Z direction by the result that we just did before and add those two together. And so if we highlight that you can see in this view now we have the door at the right height. Now we need to, well the center of the door, we've got the center of the door. Um, similar to what we did before Let's just tidy this up because this is quite messy. Uh, move this around a bit. Um, that'll do for now. Well, maybe we could bring it back. Well, we'll just get this door in and then we can tidy everything else. So, uh, we want to do um, another one of those geometries where we draw from the center so we come up to this the surface um, tab primitive and then there's center box so we can bring that in so we've got our geometry so the, for the point that we just had to for the base so you can see our box is there and now we need to give it uh, so if we um, we only need half the height because we were sort of operating from the center and we've got that dimension so we can do that and bring that in for the Z height and then we haven't figured out the door interior door width so let's come back into here and we need to measure that because it's not relative to anything else uh, distance so we can go from there to there so 0.9 of a meter so we can double click on here 0 0.9 0 and then give that uh, interior door width okay so now we want to add that to our um, what direction are we in so we want that in the y direction but again we need to divide that by two so let's just divide that by two uh, bring that into there and then into our y and then let's double check what's actually going on the X doesn't matter at this point because I don't think we're going to have a wall wider than that number so that we can then come back up into here and here's our box that we've just created uh, we can just double check that that's sitting about right and we can see in the right view here um, that's about in the right place so uh, we can then take uh, that box holding down shift this is really important so we don't lose all our other things into our solid difference uh, and we can hide the box that we just did so turn the preview off uh, come up into here and then you can see now we've got pretty much our whole design sorted we need to add a couple of other little bits just to tidy things up and I'll explain why so let's just bake this out so here's our sort of solution we bake that out uh, uh, in this case I'm going to um, just leave it there um, and I'll sh see what comes out so if we click on this we can see it's actually made up of two parts 
and that could be all right but in in this particular case we want it to be all one object because there's a whole lot of little different elements you, that you can see that are made up of in in this model that we've created so if we click on this and move it it's only moving part of it um, and depending on what you're doing that can be really good uh, but in this case we want to sort of keep it all in one element so i'm just going to delete that and what we need to do let's just go down and check because i forget these things sometimes uh, so we've done our solid difference but actually we want to join everything together so we do a solid union a merge faces and a b rep join and I'll, let's just see what all that does so let's start uh where are we so to a solid union so if we go up to intersect and shape we've got a solid union there bring that down uh, bring this across and let's now uh, bake that bake and go okay and see what happens now so now we've got just one element um, which is quite good but we've still got these sort of additional lines that I don't really like the look of so there's a few of those lines around the place so we're going to get rid of those so now we need to um, do a, a merge uh, faces uh, so we can bring those across and now if we bake that out bake um, and we'll just do that as well uh, we can see if that helps and you can see now we don't have all the same sort of extra lines that we had before uh, around so it's a much sort of cleaner geometry so um, it's definitely looking a lot better um, so I'm just going to delete that because there's one other thing that I'd done previously um, and that's just B rep join so that just sort of joins all the little bits together um, I, sometimes it's quite good practice just to do that depending on what you're doing so you, you have to learn to to make a call on what's the right process for what you're doing and in this case let's do b rep join so b rep is short for um boundary representation it's used quite a lot but uh so we can take our b reps and just join those and let's sort of bake that and see what happens here so we can pull that out uh, it doesn't seem to be a lot of difference in this case so um, the way that it's made we might not need that so let's just bake this one out as well and then we can sort of see if there's any major difference so in this case I don't think there is um, but depending on what you're doing it can be really beneficial to make sure uh, you know about some of the little tools so I'm actually going to delete that B rep join uh, and then I'm going to sort of peer you off a few of of uh, those so we've only got one there as an example um, so I'll just tidy that up and we can sort of check this in this case well um, do pan oh sorry pan oh, return so and let's pull this over so i can click this so i can come up with the gumball i can use each arrow so i can go up like that or i can use this little colored uh four squares and just move that over and we can actually put that on top and so we can actually check in this case if we've done things the way we we set out to which is quite cool um, so that's a good check but actually i want to come in here and create something different so let's just come back um, this is definitely looking messy so i think it's gonna be worth just tidying that up so i'm just going to pull the pause the video tidy it up and then come back and and see where we go next 
Okay, so I've just done a bit of a tidy up, so it's a bit, a little bit more ordered, so you can see it's less crazy, still a little bit crazy, but um, you get a bit of the idea. You could probably spend a little bit more time adjusting some of these things to align a bit better and things, but you get uh, the gist of what's going on. And what I want to do now is now we've done that, we can then modify this. So actually, uh, let's just sort of look at this in a different way. Um, let's start by uh, changing the return length. I reckon it would be better if that was longer. So it has a different quality about it. And maybe the spaces come up here can be a little bit smaller in some way. Um, where else? Uh, let's play with the uh, um, setback as well, see what we can do there. So if we now, where are we? Setback, let's make that a bit more. Maybe something like that. Um, and you can just play around and see what what design or oh other way um, you come up with uh, for what you're what you're doing. So the next video we're going to then uh, uh, put this into uh, the layout. Um, so we start to paste place that out into the layout pages. Um, before we do that, uh, it's a good idea to save. So save. Uh, in Rhino there and then also in Grasshopper so we've saved both of those and then I'm just going to uh, bake that out and this time I'm going to put it on a different layer uh, and push OK so we've just sort of done this one object because that's what we set out to do um, and now we can put that out let's just close Grasshopper and then bring that over and um, because we're on layer 2 it comes through red so let's we can change that I'm just going to make it a grey or even ones if we do white uh, or black let's just do it black I think and apply so ooh, we can sort of use that in the next video so I'll see you shortly